This is Park Warner, a Warner Brothers theme park located just outside of Madrid in Spain, where movie magic meets theme park excitement. Picture yourself soaring through the sky on accelerating coasters, immersing yourself in Hollywood theming and creating unforgettable memories. Today we're diving deep into this thrilling world, exploring everything from the adrenaline thumping rise to the dining options and the all important ticket prices, which may surprise you. I'm Paul from Loop Theme Park Adventures and this is my pocket theme park guide of Park Warner Madrid. Let's kick things off with what Park Warner is known for, its solid collection of coasters, headlined by their exceptional 2023 investment of Batman Gotham City Escape, which is simply one of the best roller coasters in Europe. This Intamin multi-launch coaster packs in so much hang time and air time that you feel as though you spent half of the ride experience out of your seat. The launches are snappy and the theming is on point too. Gotham City Escape on its own is worth a visit, and by the way, you can check out my full review of that here on the channel. But Park Warner is far from being a one coaster park. They also have two decent sized B&M coasters, an inverted Batman clone called Shadows of Arkham and a Superman themed flawless roller coaster. Both are solid and well themed attractions that could benefit from a little TLC as being older rides they have gotten a little rattly. Stumpfall is a Vekoma giant inverted boomerang and may be the most intimidating coaster on the park with its vertical reverse lift and holding brake and Coaster Express is a mid-tier wooden coaster with a fairly uneventful layout. There are also family coasters themed to Roadrunner and Tom and & Jerry, which are both loads of fun and feature some quirky theming elements, along with an indoor Scooby-Doo coaster which was closed for refurbishment during my visit, which I understand is highly regarded. Other attractions of note at Park Warner include their big and very turntable-heavy western-themed water ride Rio Bravo, a huge shot-and-drop tower, a Huss topspin, and a spooky hotel containing a Vacoma madhouse. As we navigate through the park, you'll notice its well-presented studio-style theming, transporting you into the worlds of your favourite movies and characters. The emphasis is obviously on Warner Brothers property, so you'll see a lot of DC characters like Batman and Superman, and famous cartoons, both classic and modern, from Looney Tunes and Cartoon Network, along with some sections that are just great to look at, like the lagoon at the centre of the park, which is an awesome photo op. However, there are a few areas undergoing maintenance and some spots could use improvement in terms of sight lines, but overall Park Warner is well presented and has a decent atmosphere. This is aided by a variety of shows and parades that take place throughout the day, including the Gotham Stunt Show and the Character Parade. Now let's talk about refueling for your adventures. I found many of the food options to be a bit limited and low in quality, with some restaurants closed, but Foster's Hollywood stands out as a delicious choice that was reasonably priced and offered big portions of good quality food, so this would be my recommendation for lunch. Sadly, I do need to address some of the operational aspects of Park Warner. I found the operations in general to be inconsistent and will often depend on the staff you encounter. With the exception of Gotham City, most coasters had very slow dispatch times, and while Gotham itself was pumping out trains, the way guests are batched for the pre-show could definitely be improved. Interactions with team members vary as well. Some are friendly and helpful, while others may come across a bit grumpy. And you will almost certainly encounter queue jumping, which little effort is made to prevent. This is one area that I'd really like to see Park Warner improve on, and if you visited yourself then let me know down below if you had a similar experience. When it comes to souvenirs, you'll find mostly Warner Brothers character merchandise with limited options for ripe specific memorabilia. I found this to be the case in many studio style theme parks, which feels like a bit of a missed opportunity to me, but I was able to grab some cool Gremlins and Goonies merchandise to satisfy my inner 80s child, so it's not all bad. A one day ticket for Park Warner cost me 45 euros, with the option to add an extra day for just 10 euros more, which I think represents great value for a short trip to a park which justifies two days to get the full experience, particularly if like me you just want those Gotham City re-rides. There are local bus services direct to the park and the taxi drop off is right outside the entrance so no need to go searching for a random spot in parking lot D if you're ordering an Uber. Overall Park Warner is a theme park that has a lot to offer including one of the world's best roller coasters and a solid supporting lineup. The theming is strong throughout and you can get a decent bite to eat but efficient and more consistent operations along with a quality Dark Ride could really help elevate Park Warner to elite status. If you'd like to learn more about the wonderful Batman Gotham City Escape, then you can watch my full review which is up on the screen now. And if you enjoyed this review, then leaving a like means more than you know. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you next time.